Now, let's talk about the receipt area view function. There are two steps to use this component. First, let's get into the project database part. Find the receipt area list component. Click on this component. Click add. Getting into the data item settings. Set the receipt area name, the receipt counts, and the receipt item counts. In the receipt data item set, setting the data item's name, the data type, and the length of the data, the lower limiting value of the data, and the upper limiting value of the data. We also provide the insert row, the copy row, the delete row, and the cut and paste row, and clear all receipt data functions. Select these functions, define a bit register, choose the trigger type, and these functions can be used. Here are the receipt area addresses. There are bit addresses and word addresses. Also, we provide the current receipt addresses to show the current receipt. After finish setting the receipt counts and receipt item counts, the system will assign the addresses automatically. Here is an example of my receipt area. Five receipt counts and five receipt item counts. The system will assign 25 addresses for my receipt area. Second step, let's get into the edit page. Get into the function path. Find out the receipt area view component. Drag this component to our edit area. Click currently receipt area. Choose the receipt area we need to display. Here are some switches to do the insert, delete, copy, cut, paste, delete or data functions. I use the bit state switches. The switch type depends on the trigger type, which you set in the receipt area list. Now we can do the offline simulation to see the receipt area view function. Click on the table cell. We can change each value here. Choose one line. Click copy. Choose another line. Click paste. Choose one line. Click cut. Choose another line. Click paste. We can insert one row above and insert one row below and we can also delete all the data here. 
this is the function of receipt area view. The next important function of this component is the export and import CSV files function. Click the receipt export control. Select receipt export. Setting the name of the folder where put their CSV files. Choose the memory area to save their CSV files. Setting one bit register to trigger the export function. The export setting is finished. Click import receipt setting. Select enable import receipt. Choose use variable file name. Set word addresses to put the file name. Set one bit register to trigger the import function. There are two things need to be attention. One, the export and import function must work with the component file list. File list is in the function parts. Drag this component to our edit area. Select enable for file path. Setting the address and the length. This address must be same with the variable file name's address. The variable file name address is in the import receipt setting here and the length must be same. The second thing is that these two components receive area view and file list have to be in one page at the same time. These two switches is used to do the export and import function. Now we can do the offline simulation. Click export. After the reminder operation complete happen, we can get into the HMI folder to find out our CSV file. Click HMI. Click Export. Click Receive to CSV. We can see the last CSV file is the receipt file which we just have exported. Now let's do the import function. Getting into USB 1. There is one CSV file here. Select this CSV file. Click import. Now the CSV file is imported into the receipt area view. That's all my introduction. Thank you.